Hey y'all, I am just grabbing some stuff um, for a little printmaking uh, demo. And really, it's nothing specific. I just, I'm thinking of texture. I'm thinking of things that'll make an impression. I grabbed like some paper plates to like mix my ink on or my paint on. And I couldn't find any uh, acrylic paint that I had, so I am just going to use old watercolor paint, which is water soluble, which is fine. And I've got a couple of different pieces of copy paper, some thicker copy paper. This is like really smooth, and this has more of a tooth to it. It feels rougher. The smooth stuff, stuff is just going to sit on top of it until it dries. The rougher stuff is actually going to absorb it more. So we can, you know, work on, you know, putting designs on two different. But I was wanting to maintain this 8.5 by 11 so that we can fold it in half and add it to our journal eventually next week. So one of the first things that I did is I raided my son's toy box and I got two Legos and those are going to be my first stamps. I'm going to use, let's see, this sheet of paper here and then I'm just going to take my watercolor ink and let's see I have like a knife that I can use to kind of smear it around and mix it up and I'm just going to start off with black because once I get black pattern I can always take that black pattern and pull it into um the computer and use it put any kind of color on it. So I'm just going to get like a cheap brush. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to just smear this out. Oh. Alright, now we're back in business. I'm, I'm smearing it out a little bit to see if I can't do it upside down. Kind of like and I may need more. Let me get some more on there. I don't want to do it too thick because I don't want it to get like in the crevice. I just want it to like coat the little dots. So I'm just going to very lightly press. And anytime, see, I didn't want to get the corner, but I did. Oh well. So. I got it on there, but before I put it on here, I want to get like a scrap piece of paper and just test it out and maybe get some of the extra ink off of it to see how it's going to do. And so it looks like the first, like after the ink, the first one's the best. So I'm just going to take my sheet of paper here and Remember with um, design principles, it is repetition. And so I'm just going to go through and do a dip. I'm going to try to be consistent. Like a dip, 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 dip. And I'm just going to just keep going with this angle and this pattern. And it doesn't have to be perfect because not being perfect is what makes it interesting. If I wanted something perfect, I'd go into the computer and then it would look like everybody else's. And I've got to add a slight angle just to add interest. So that it doesn't just look like a straight up and down Lego brick. 
And by doing it twice, like one fully loaded and the next not so loaded, I'm actually given a little bit of variety of color and contrast. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's do it here. Oops, and there, and that's okay. I got a little bit too excited with my ink. And again, I'm just trying to keep it simple, as consistent as possible. It's okay if there's some flaws. All right, so now I have just a nice repetitive pattern. Um, for, you know, for use, however I wanna use it later on. Let me take that, and I probably should have brought some paper towels, hold on. So I got some paper towels that I'm going to use and I'll clean this up. Watercolor paint and acrylic paints while you're soluble. So with soap and water, it will come clean. But you know, I got this nice little repetitive pattern. I can come back once it dries. And if I want to like lay a bigger mass of color on top of it, like with a stencil, I can. It's there for me to play with. And so let me take one of these smooth sheets of paper, which I know just from drawing on this stuff. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty thick. And it doesn't like, it doesn't bleed through, but because it's smooth, um, stuff just sits on top. So I'm gonna try something. Now I've got like an old lime. And again, this may not work. I don't know. I'm just gonna cut it on this plate here. Hopefully it'll cut with this little uh, cut. No, I have to go cut this legit. All right, so this lime's a little juicy, which will be good because it'll keep the ink moist. And I'm just going to spread my paint around a little bit. I'm on this, and again, I don't really know how this is going to turn out. This is why experimenting is fun. And let's see, I'm going to just, oh, so I like what's going on there. So anytime that I want to, like, I forgot to put down like some newspaper, so give me a second. All right, newspapers underneath. I'm re-inking a little bit, but you know, I, I want to go off the sides, which is why I need the newspaper. And once I've like gone off the sides a little bit, I don't need to like put the paper back down on it because then I'll just get ink on the back and then it's chaos, mass hysteria. So now, going to fold this so the ink won't get on anything but the extra newspaper and I'm going to turn my page and then just play. I really like how this is turning out. Okay, maybe not so much that one, but this is like really giving me some interesting repetitive shapes there. Isn't that cool? And I don't, I'm gonna leave that blank because I feel like if I put that hold or stamp it right there, that would be too much because I don't really want them touching because if they get too close, it visually gives it tension, which is where tension is where you'll focus on. But I really like how that turned out. Look at, look how nice those shapes are. So that definitely turned out way better than I thought. So old lemon or lime. Good. I'm going to take this newspaper, put it down. Again, just be mindful of like what the ink gets on. All right, some more newspaper stuff. Again, I'm just looking like I seriously went through my mail and boxes and stuff and I got like some bubble wrap. I'm thinking this might be an interesting texture. So, 
going to just cut a little bit off very carefully without cutting myself. Nobody needs to go to the emergency room for stitches or anything like that, including me. And I still like, I probably could squeeze some more out, but I'm just going to use what I've got here. And if I need to, I don't really want to thin it out. I want to keep it kind of viscous. I want to keep it kind of a pasty quality. Um, that way it'll do, it'll have a little bit better, um, this one doesn't want to hold down. It'll have a little bit, like, it won't be so thin and I want kind of like a big, um, contrast color, a big opaque color. And later on we can add water and make it thinner, but, I mean, look at that. So now I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm going to overlap. And actually, this is good to kind of use up the rest of this ink over here. All of this stamp is on pretty much called relief printing. And I don't want to, like, I'm going to go down and up because if I, like, squinch it or scrape it, then it's going to be... Um, because of this paper, it's going to smear. I get smeared a little bit there. And I'll make sure I get on the outside there. And again, you know, this may not be like a good final pattern, but it's kind of a building block in screen printing. A lot of times, like if you have um, a texture or a pattern, that you're not going to use as your final you'll keep your extra paper and you'll do test prints um just like i did earlier with the little card let me find that card right here so these are test prints so in um, screen printing you do test prints on full sheets of paper um just to make sure like all the ink comes through your screen and you keep your test prints to do it over and over again and what happens is you have multiple images built up on your um, test prints and they become like their own individual work of art and they're gorgeous. So, um, so right now I've got one, two, three patterns and I'm just gonna keep experimenting. Um, I've got plenty of paper and we'll let all of these dry and Tomorrow I will do another video and come back and lay some different stuff on top. I think what I am going to do, and be careful with this because there's ink on that, so I'm just going to fold it like that. I'm going to continue with my line because, like I said, I really like what it's giving me. And that way I'll have two different patterns that I can play with more if I want to. I can also, once these are dry, like I said, scan them into the computer and do various different things with them. Doesn't that look nice? It looks nice. I'm so impressed with that. Okay. Let's see. I brought a couple of other things that can make patterns. I was thinking of rubber bands. I wasn't quite sure how many rubber bands and what I can put the rubber bands on. So give me a second to think. Okay, so I found one of these bigger Lego blocks that my son had. And I'm just going to take some rubber bands that I had. You can use string if you want to. And I'm going to kind of create like a pattern here on the back side. Here and here and see how that works. It may be a mess, it may not work. Again, this is just experimenting. Um, you're gonna have successes and you're gonna have failures. So let me try dipping this. And I may, let me do, here's my test. Ooh, I kinda like that, but I need more ink. So let me throw some more ink down. And then I'm just going to try to even it up a little bit. 
you can, I have an old brush that I'm using to kind of spread it out on my plate. You can use, you know, whatever you can find um, to spread it out. All right, let's do another one. Ooh, ooh, I like that a lot. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. All right. Let me just do it right now. So again, I'm just doing a repetitive pattern on this page. Okay. Keep going like that. I want to. It's kind of nice. I'll go off the page. And again, I like doing the print off the page because then it gives it like, it's called a bleed. It gives it a sense that there's a much larger thing, much larger pattern thing going on. That one's a little close. But again, this is on that really slick paper, so it's going to smear easily. But again, I kind of like what's going on there. I'm going to put this over here. It's always good to have stuff like spread out where nothing can be put on top or like there's no fan that's going to blow the sheets off the table or anything like that. Um, and also a place where your cat, and I do have a cat right over here, cannot get onto it. So that I kind of liked. I'm going to throw some more rubber bands on. Y'all, I've had this rubber band ball, like, probably for 10 years. So this is being used. But before you use anything, please check with your parents, your guardian, um, whoever's taking care of you, whoever's place you're staying at, people that are feeding you. Um, make sure that it is okay for you to do this, because you don't want to make anybody mad. I definitely do not want them mad at me. All right. So I'm just going to pile this up with some rubber bands. And do some more and see what's going on. So this print, I'm just going to... This is going to be a massive overlay chaos print really put some interesting textures down and also because this is a rectangle and it's pretty uniform as far as a square goes if I overlay it it kind of breaks up that squareness and again you want to go off the page make sure you have use print down and I'm going to get it on the back just simply because I don't feel like changing out my newsprint. I just got to make sure that when, if I get something on the back, then I'm going to put it on more newsprint so that I don't like put it down on like my tablecloth in there. Come on. Like, really, I'm trying to use as much of this ink as possible. Ooh, look, I've got a whole glob of it I'm still on the paint brush. Yes, oh my gosh, look at that texture, y'all. I am in love with this, look at that. Isn't that cool? And it's so unique, it's one of a kind. Um, very easy to do and I'm going to show y'all like if I love doing stuff like this I love experimenting with textures and printing and and things like that and what I love even more besides like having something like this as you know just a page full of this in my sketchbook just to add texture and interest but I can also take a picture of it or scan it and put it into the computer. And then there's so many different websites out there that lets you take a pattern like this and put it on clothing or a backpack or a t-shirt, and then you can sell it. 
Um, so let's look at all these different ones that we did today. Let me move the camera for a second. So, and that was just like within, I don't know, 20 minutes. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and do some stencils and then we can do some, you know, you can see some different kinds of um, stencil print making.